A couple came to Bethlehem, their expecting child. They searched the inn to find a place for you were coming soon. There was no room for them to stay, so in a manger filled with hay, God's only Son was born, oh, hallelujah. Let their flocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. It was just as the angels said, you'll find him in a manger bed. Emmanuel and Savior, hallelujah. shone bright up in the east to Bethlehem the wise men three came many miles and journeyed long for you and to the place at which you were their frankincense and golden myrrh they gave to you and cried out hallelujah Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning in the name of him for whom we wait, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. This is, of course, the fourth Sunday of Advent, and anticipation is building and building, and I hope that your hearts are stirred by God's holy word and by the anticipation of what he brings to us. Uh, we'll uh, continue with the lighting of our Advent candle with a family that some of you might be familiar with. At last, the fourth Sunday in Advent, the first candle gave us light to wait, and it seems like it has been a long wait. The second candle gave us light to prepare, and we are almost ready.
The third candle reminded us to celebrate Jesus' promised return. And now finally, we light the fourth candle to remind us that Jesus, the light of the world, is very near. From Isaiah chapter 9, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Let us pray. God of love, we praise you for your Son, the light of the world. Even now that light is breaking in upon us. May we reflect the light of your love even as we wait for him to come again. Amen. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kneel as you are able, or remain seated. Most merciful God, show us the consequences of unrepentant living so that we might be brought to repentance. Then, by the blood of Christ, save us, forgive us, and captivate our wills to follow you. Yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. You who are brought to true repentance are also given true faith. The death of Christ brings you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, and his resurrection is now your new life. Thanks be to God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to, pe grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Please share peace with one another. We remain standing for our opening hymn.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, our Father, grant us your grace always that we may wait expectantly for the arriving of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and to work diligently in love for one another while we wait through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please be seated. The first lesson is from Micah, the fifth chapter. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she, who is in labor, has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. The word of the Lord. Our psalm once again this morning is sung, and actually rather than a psalm, it is Mary's song from Luke chapter 1. Um, Claire and Luke will introduce the refrain, and then we will begin with that refrain.
The second lesson is from Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he had said above, quote, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, behold, I have come to do your will. He does away with the first in order to establish the second. And by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, children are welcome forward for our children's message. Bring the chocolate. It's not time yet. Oh, it has to be. Seems like forever. Seems like forever until what? Christmas. Two days? That's too long. Yep. Two more days to wait, right? I don't want to. I want it now. It's hard to wait, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Sometimes we say, I can't wait. I say that all the time. Yep, but we have to wait, don't we? I don't like it. No, <laughs> it's not fun to wait, but sometimes we have to. And that's just the way it is, you know? Sometimes we wait just a little while for something. Sometimes we wait for a long, 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 long time. Like at Christmas, right? Feels like it. Yep. Well, you know what? A long time ago, long before you were born, when I was only five years old. That must have been a long time ago. <laughs> when I was only five years old, my mom and dad said I would get to see my brother again. Why couldn't you see him? Well, my brother had died. Hmm? And I was very sad, and they said, you'll get to see him again in heaven. And I said, when? And they said, well, whenever Jesus takes you there. And I said, when is that? Did they know? No, they don't know. I don't know. But I know that the time will come, right? So I'm waiting. And it's been a long wait. Fifty years is a long time. Can't believe it's been that long already. But you know, back then it seemed like it would never, never come. But now... 50 years doesn't seem like it took so long. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> well, it doesn't feel like it's that long. So we can trust God, even if he makes us wait for a very long time. And when he finally fulfills his promise, it's going to seem like it was a very short wait. That's hard to believe. Yeah, it feels like it's very, very hard to believe that it's going to come, but it will. Jesus will return, and we will celebrate, and it will seem like it was a very short wait. Okay, Let's pray. Dear God, help us to wait and to always believe that you will keep your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Great. Thanks for coming up, guys.
We stand for the hearing of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and return to her home. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <laughs> Fellow watchers and waiters for the Messiah, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, it was just an ordinary, quiet afternoon in the house of the priest Zechariah, not least because it had been over six months 
since he had even been able to speak. There he sat at his study table reading through the prophets. This old, childless man, while his dearly beloved wife Elizabeth worked quietly preparing the evening meal. It was a little tougher task than usual, however, because of her enlarged belly. Zechariah shook his head in wonder and smiled as a tear of joy stained his scroll. I am going to be a father, he thought. Unbelief. Oh, wait, he thought. Better not even think it's unbelievable. I didn't believe it when the angel announced it to me, and he struck me mute. So if I start thinking it, I don't want to take any chances about what he might do next. So as he mused about what had happened and what was happening, he remembered from Israel's history, Hannah, the wife of Elkanah, who had conceived in her old age and given birth to Samuel, who became judge over all Israel. And of course, he couldn't forget the words the angel who had spoken to him in the temple said, Your son will go before the Lord your God in the spirit and power of Elijah to make ready for the Lord a people who are prepared. What was this child of his to become? What would he do? It was all so incomprehensibly strange. But his contemplation was interrupted by a knock at the door, and he rose to see who it was. And then the fun starts. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, which is to say God's own presence and his very spirit, which had conceived in Mary's womb the Messiah, whisked Mary on her way to her aunt Elizabeth and Uncle Zechariah's house. Well, Zechariah opens the door and Mary says, Hi, Uncle. And she shouts into the kitchen, Hi, Auntie. And the baby in Elizabeth's womb breaks into a dance. Infused with God's Holy Spirit, this still in utero forerunner of the Messiah, hears the voice of the Messiah's mother, and knows who she's carrying, and he can't help himself. He just leaps. He's here. And don't tell me, please, that infants shouldn't be baptized because they don't have faith. I mean, come on. This one hasn't even been born yet, and he recognizes his Lord. Not to mention what this ought to tell us about the dignity and the sacred nature of fetuses. But at any rate, the fun does not stop with John's dance in his mother's womb. It has only started. The self-same spirit is simultaneously filling Elizabeth, and she can't stop herself either, but she starts prophesying. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the child you are carrying. And while Mary's humility is much spoken of, Elizabeth's is just as simple and beautiful as Mary's. She says, who am I, who am I, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And I think you can appreciate this humility even more when you remember that Elizabeth is quite old and that Mary is most likely in her early teens. And this aged and dignified old woman puts herself beneath this teenager. But we're still not done. God's spirit keeps on flowing and rolling, and next it gets hold of Mary, and she starts preaching, magnifying and glorying God for what he is bringing about, pro proclaiming his mercy for those who fear him, and his loving regard for those that the world doesn't even notice. God's grace and mercy are just spilling out all over the place, and it can't be contained. It's just a riot. And poor Zechariah. Zechariah just has to sit there mute and watch it all. But he will get his chance. In about three more months, when his little baby boy is born, and when he gets his chance, he rolls off a prophetic beauty that wraps up the first chapter of Luke's gospel. I mean, what a lot of fun this must have been. 
No wonder Mary stuck around for three more months, huh? You know, in going through this gospel lesson, I got to thinking, if I stand here and I don't proclaim the mercy and glory of God and Christ Jesus as the Messiah, Elizabeth and Mary might show up, yank me out of here, and take my place, huh? And yet there are those who think a woman shouldn't be in the pulpit. Hmm? Ooh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> yeah, we don't need to go there right now. The point is this. When God decides he's going to do something, and he sends his spirit to get the ball rolling, there won't be any stopping it. There won't be any containing it, regulating it, codifying it, or controlling it. It is just going to let loose and be all over the place. And as he spoke through his prophet Isaiah, as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, bringing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. It is going to accomplish that, I, that for which I sent it. And this event that we remember year by year, the impending arrival of the long, long, long-awaited Messiah is the biggest thing God decided to do. So he didn't hold back. He just let everything go, pulled out all the stops, and the dancing and singing began with an as-yet-unborn infant. And of course, then after the songs from Elizabeth and Mary and Zechariah, then comes a sky filled to overflowing with angels and shepherds and, well, I don't want to get ahead of things. We'll get to those songs in a day's time or two. But yes, this, the Messiah, the promised Christ, is the biggest thing God has done because it is he, Christ Jesus, sent to be the conquering king over all our enemies who are also his enemies. Sin, the devil, and what Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians, called the last enemy to be destroyed, which is death. This is the biggest thing God has ever decided to do. And when all of this glorious activity of God comes to pass, what you will see and hear at the end is what Isaiah prophesied in the conclusion to chapter 55, from which I read just a minute ago. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will break into singing before you. And all the trees are going to clap their hands. I mean, listen. Infants, women, men, mountains, trees, God's entire creation singing, dancing, and clapping, enjoying glory for what God is bringing about, the salvation that is coming. So let's join the song. Hmm? To be specific, Mary's song. We'll stand and sing, My Soul Now Magnifies the Lord.
together with the saints of all times and places, we confess one true faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Almighty God, our Father, your servants, Mary and Elizabeth, the mothers of our Lord and of his forerunner, John, were greatly blessed. And yet the same blessing also pierced their hearts with suffering. Teach us to accept your blessings as true servants, knowing that to whom much is given, much will be required. Then shall your name be honored, your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us this time to bring our mutual prayers before you in one accord. You have promised that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are with them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of our hearts as you deem appropriate, granting us in this world knowledge of you and in the world to come life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to your care the children of our parish that they may grow in grace and in the knowledge of you, their Savior and Lord. Bless them with loving parents and teachers and keep them from all danger and harm. Lord, in your mercy. Visit and relieve, O oh Lord, your servants who are ill, for whom we pray for, naming them with our lips or in our hearts. Bless them with a sure confidence in your care. Defend them in danger and keep them in your lasting peace and safety. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of creation and life, guard and preserve the unborn. The work of your own hand be with the mothers who carry them. Bring them both safety through temptation and danger to the joy of life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you that in your great mercy, you have given us your holy and blessed word. And we pray that we may always receive it with thankful hearts, live according to it, increase in faith, hope, and love, and at last obtain eternal salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, you have entrusted us with many things. Help us to be true servants of them all, that we may enjoy the bounty you promise us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father. You may be seated. He who came to us as God in flesh and blood comes to us still in flesh and blood in these gifts, the bread and wine. Come and receive.
Please rise. Now may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you in body and soul and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. To get my notes, just a few very brief announcements. Um, our Advent candle lighting and readings, we need one more family to volunteer for 5 p.m. service tomorrow. So if you or your family would like to do that, uh, we would be happy to have you. You can sign your name up on the sheet outside my office and the readings are waiting for you there on my coffee table. So go right in and take those readings. Um, speaking of tomorrow, services are at 3 p.m., 5 p.m., and 7 p.m. I think there was a misprint in the um, parish news on the front on the little sidebar. It might say 3.30, but it's 3, 5, and 7 on the hour and then Christmas morning service at 10 a.m. Our thanks to the family of Mike Hansen for the floral arrangements on either side of the chancel down front. Uh, Mike's funeral was here on Friday. And our sympathies also are with the family of Travis Plum who passed away Friday. His service will be here on Thursday evening at 5 p.m. with visitation beginning at 3. Uh, please do check through your parish news for information about other happenings in the days ahead. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
go in the peace of the Lord.